Silverstone Alter G1M uses an unusual form factor. It has a relatively small footprint and it stands tall. We've seen cases with the motherboard rotated or inverted that have vertical airflow, but they tend to be about the same size as a regular case. This fella is not that. If you are already thinking about the Fantex Evolve Shift Shift to Air, you're in the right ballpark. If you have a very long memory of thinking about the Silverstone Fortress FT-03, then you're absolutely thinking along the right track. I'm gonna pull the panels off, show you inside, and then we'll talk details. So the top panel just pops off, held in place with magnets. As you can see, it's got a filter built in. You can't separate the filter from the panel. It's one unit. It's on the top, so that is the exhaust. And there you can see the motherboard rear I.O. panel, plus some thumb screws for three of the four panels. This is the front. It has the front I.O., which is good, because sometimes when we're talking about front, back, left, right, it can get a bit out of hand with some of these more unusual form factors. This is relatively straightforward. And the panel just pulls away. It has these six uh, steel pop pins, and it also has some guide pins. Let's go for this side panel, thumb screw. Up with the panel. There's again a mesh filter that's uh, fixed in position. So no noise deadening material, single panel, albeit it's essentially got the steel panel plus the filter, so two parts to it. Go around the back, you will note we have a cutout there, we have a cutout there with the cable grommet. These will be significant. Whoops. Uh, again, the filter is clipped into place. And then this panel, thumb screw, and away it comes. Plain steel, this panel is not perforated, therefore does not require filtration. And there we have it. A, I think, quite simple structure that is steel. It has a single 180mm air penetrator fan, obviously for intake, and below the air penetrator fan, dust filter. So plenty of filtration. You can see there the air goes in here and is then drawn up. How well the air will flow given it has to turn through 90 degrees we shall see. And then cables go up top and exit through this grommet here and air comes out there. As I say, quite straightforward. But despite the simplicity, this case has a number of interesting features. Those features centre around cooling, storage, a motherboard form factor, and also power supply form factor. Look back at the Fortress FT-03 and you'll see it supports a micro ATX motherboard, an ATX power supply, has a couple of fans in the floor, and you can install more fans elsewhere. The cooling is all centred around air cooling. And then we move forward to the Fantex Evolve Shift. This supports mini ITX motherboards with an SFXL power supply, and you only have the option of installing 120mm or 140mm cooling units. It's got a very small footprint, and it's got some very pretty glass. However, you are sorely restricted. Move forward to the Fantex Shift 2 Air, and you're still restricted to a mini ITX motherboard, but now you've got more airflow because the panels also act as intakes. You may be wondering, why am I talking about Fantex in a Silverstone review? Well, if you glance at this page from the Silverstone Reviewer's Guide, you'll see that Silverstone themselves are using both the FT-03 and also the Fantex Shift 2 Air as reference points. And this is very useful. I can glance back at my recent review of the Fantex Shift 2 Air, look at the negative points I raised about that case, and use that as a reference point with the Alter G1M and see whether or not Silverstone has achieved great success. The key feature to my mind about the Alter G1M is that it has this 180mm fan at the bottom. That obviously dictates the space inside the chassis. There is, however, a little bit of a mystery over precisely which fan has been provided by Silverstone. And to add to my annoyance, the fan cable is tucked around here 
and has a twisty tie, which I think I could probably just about get to. I'm going to remove the fan from the chassis, which is something you wouldn't expect to do if you're buying the case. And the reason is I want to identify the fan if I possibly can. Silverstone lists uh, a number of different models of 180mm air penetrators on their website. And yet for some reason they are sort of reticent about uh, identifying it. If it is the latest model, that would seem to me to be quite a plus point. And if it's the previous generation, that's fine as well. How do I get this thing out? There we go. Right, so there's the twisty tie, which is pretty much inaccessible unless you remove the fan. Here is the fan, model CC18032H12D. DC 12V 0.31 amps, so three and a half watts, 3.7 watts, I think that would be. And here's the significant thing to my mind, which is that the blades have this textured finish on them which says to me that this is probably the very latest model. Uh, but till we actually run the fan and can clock the speed, we won't be sure. And then we have support for the power supply. This case supports either SFX or SFXL, which I think is a good thing because it means small power supply. ATX takes up too much space. And you can see the power supply being in this housing here means that the interior is uh, open to airflow. Now you're probably thinking SFX, SFXL is a terrible idea because it costs an absolute fortune. And I'm here to tell you that this Silverstone SX750 750 watt platinum rated power supply is on sale in the UK for 130 pounds, including VAT, which is actually blooming good value in quite comparable to uh, other 750 watt platinum ATX power supplies. And then we have motherboard support micro ATX. As you'll see from the uh, shelves behind me, most of the boards I, I see are full ATX, if not uh, uh, extended ATX. We don't need them. We generally have one graphics card, which might be quite wide, and that's it. Other expansion cards very rarely use them. So micro ATX supports all the hardware I typically want to use. Mini ITX, now the hand which I generally like, is more expensive and you have components on the back and such like in complicated heat sinks. Micro ATX makes perfect sense to me. So the combination of SFX, SFXL power supply and micro ATX, that's good. Also, this case supports a full length graphics card, which is also true of the FT03 and the Fantech shift cases. So again, good things. The main features of this G1M, I'm liking. The snag is, it is relatively expensive. In the UK, this black version priced about 135 pounds, including VAT. The white version slightly more expensive, 142 pounds, including VAT. In US dollars, those prices are 170 US for the black, 180 US for the white. That's a bit steep. After all, the Fantex shift cases, they're down below the £100 mark. So this is carrying a premium of about 50%. And admittedly, this fan has to be costing something. But apart from that, the chassis itself, it's just some clever steel stampings and a nifty piece of design. But let's not forget the front panel, which has two USB 3 Type A's, one USB 3.1 Type C, and a combo audio headset jack. So the front IO is bang up to date. Right, I'm gonna put this fan back in the case and start putting some hardware inside it. That's the power supply installed. And I mentioned previously the cutout in the bottom of this panel, which is where the mains kettle core goes in. And then we have a pass-through cable that goes to the side of the SX750 power supply. These are the cables that are gonna feed to the graphics card and the motherboard. And these cables are going from the front panel I.O. to the motherboard as well. But before we get to that stage, we need to install the motherboard, which is this Mag B560M Mortar Wi-Fi with a full fat Core i9-11900K, 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX 3600, and under the heatsink we have a separate Rocket 4.0 SSD. That's all good. So this motherboard is going to go here on the motherboard mount. 
what's this thing that's in the way? I could feed the motherboard in place and then try and get the screwdriver through. But what's this all about? This is one of the nifty features that I mentioned in my intro. It is a combo bracket for cooling and also for storage. We can install in units of 120 mil, so 120, 243, 60, all in one or rad. I don't think this is really a case for custom loop. So let's think all in one or indeed fans or storage. Happily in the reviewer's guide, Silverstone gives us a photo that shows the different combos that you can install. Many permutations, essentially up to three fans or radiator units or two drives. And in addition, this panel here. Also, if you look very closely, has mounts for drives or fans. So we could put up to three fans on that plate there and two on there, or we could put two drives on here and two drives on here, or some combination thereof. Reaches for a hard drive, that, and that. But then of course I can't put a liquid cooler there, in which case I'll be using an air cooler on the CPU. But just look, with this 180mm fan unit at the bottom, which obviously sets the width of the case, if I have drives mounted here, you can see I've got this space available for an air cooler on the CPU. So we're not restricted to a really low profile cooler. Anyway, for the moment, I'm gonna put that to one side and get on and make sure I get this the right way around. IO panel has to go up. Motherboard goes like so. Graphics card then hangs in this space here. We're making progress. So motherboard assembly installed, power supply, and also the graphics card, which is my Palette RTX 3080 Gaming Pro, which I've only previously used with a water block. So this is it with the full air cooler. And it's a mighty beast, and yet plenty of space. What are my views so far on the installation? I'm gonna say that cable management is less than perfect, not a shock really. So the cables powering the graphics card have to come over the back because they can't come through the front, uh, which means they sort of hang somewhat in space. Uh, if we go around the back, we do indeed have the cables reasonably tidily tucked away, bearing in mind there's no glass, no RGB either. Uh, everything's gonna be out of sight. What I'm trying to do here is just to keep things tidy and out of the airflow as much as possible. EPS cables feed up here and go there. Question is, what sort of cooling am I gonna install on the CPU? Bearing in mind, it's a Core i9-11900K. 9, get that in the right place, 11900K. Uh, so I could use an air cooler, but that doesn't seem entirely fair for such a mighty processor, and it's uh, wasting this space. I think I'm going to go for a Celsius 36 from Fractal, which is a 360 Ace Tech. Uh, I think it should go in without any difficulty. Clearly, if I do that, I don't have the option of putting any storage here. I could add some drives to this back panel if I want, and that would strike me as quite straightforward. Well, I've had fun and games installing AIO coolers in relatively compact cases recently. Lian Lee Q58, yes, I'm talking about you. And it's a similar story here with the Silverstone. I have to mount the radiator in board of the fans. Uh, I've tried it with the rad against this bracket fans in board because it's really easy to install the hardware that way. However, the tank of the rad then clashes with the frame of the case. Uh, this way I and also I've had to move the uh, power supply cables going to the graphics card uh, Because where they were originally meant they couldn't flex in fully Anywho, I should now be able to put the assembly in place Need to shimmy these hoses the side like that push down and then 
I can screw it home and tighten up the fan screws. So when I said it should go in place easily, what I meant to say was it should go in place. Also worth noting, I have the fans in intake at the moment. I think I shall also try flipping them to have them in exhaust. It's not at all clear to me which will work best. Thing is we have uh, a fair degree of crossover as the radiator is sitting quite a way in to the 180 fan. And it's not immediately obvious to me which works best, air in and then blown out or air in, air in, high pressure up. I suspect this is the way to go, but I think there might be merit in trying the fans all the way around. Anyway, there we have it. That is a PC. The skeletal PC lives. I don't have the panels in place yet, so we can see what's going on inside. And you can also see that the rear IO cables come out of the back panel and then vanish out through this grommet here keeping it all neat and tidy. Also, the fan at the bottom of the case, the 180mm intake, does indeed appear to be the 184i Pro model. It's running at 1200 RPM at full speed. It has those textured fan blades, so it appears to be the latest and greatest 180mm fan in Silverstone's catalogue. Why they don't list that as a feature, I have no clue. Now you've had a good look at the innards, I'm going to put the panels on and then get on with some thermal testing. Thermals are tested, the results are in, and I am slightly surprised by my findings. Let's go back over the spec of the system. So the Palace RTX 3080 under full loads running at 1.9 gigahertz and takes 320 watts for board power. The Core i9-1100K, bearing in mind this is not a Z series motherboard, is running at a slightly lower speed than you might expect, running at 4.7 gigahertz all cores, that draws 163 watts, which is actually quite a useful number because that's in the same ballpark, about 20 watts higher than a, a Ryzen processor. So a, an Intel processor running at full noise can draw the best part of 300 watts when you're running up to you know, five gigahertz all cores. So this is 163 watts, it's still a lot of power, but it's not as much as you see on uh, a high-end Intel system. It's mid-range. And the entire system power at the wall socket, 620 watts. So we're not messing around here. And I'm also really rather glad <laughs> I've got a 750 watt power supply inside this case. So the first run with the fans at 100%, uh, that's the 180mm fan on the floor and the three fans on the AIO. And... It's noisy. I'm gonna give you the true temps as I measured them. However, the figures in the graphs are uh, deltas minus ambient. The ambients are actually very consistent, 2021. 20, the true temps CPU package, 80 degrees, GPU 77. I'm happy with those, those are good numbers. However, when I slowed the fans to 50%, the system Firstly, got a lot more quiet. However, the temperatures went up significantly. The CPU went up to 90 degrees, a rise of 10. The GPU went up to 81 degrees, a rise of 4. The design of the Alter G1M allows us to remove the side panel and simply take the all-in-one out and plonk it on the table. So it's connected and running, but airflow is not an issue. With the fans running at 50% and the case open to the elements, the CPU temperature drops to 73. That's a decrease of 17 degrees. Interestingly, the GPU also 73 degrees. So nice and cool. Then I flipped the fans around. So now the fans in the all-in-one are running in exhaust. With the fans running at 50%, it continues to be nice and quiet. the ambient had increased by one degree. I'm seeing a temperature for the CPU of 92, so it's crept up by a degree. The GPU, however, 
77, so the GPU temperature dropped slightly, increasing the fan speed to 100% with the all-in-one fans in exhaust. Once again, noisy. And the CPU package temperature, 82 degrees. Once again, we see a differential of 10 degrees, depending on whether the fans are running 100% or 50%. GPU temperature, 75. Those figures were not quite what I was expecting. What they're saying to me is that having the fans on the all-in-one, either in intake or exhaust, there isn't a right and a wrong. You pick whichever suits you. However, I would personally have that in intake and then the air is going out of the top in exhaust. And what it's also saying to me is that this high-end PC, in this case, it's suffering somewhat. Airflow is not the greatest. But if you cut down your graphics card, after all, it's an RTX 3080. And if you cut down your processor, for argument's sake, Core i7, Core i5, Ryzen 5, I think it would do absolutely fine in this configuration. And I am pushing it deliberately. It's suffering. No two ways about it. To finish up, my pros and cons, the pros, the good points. It's got a small footprint on your desk. I like the fact it's micro ATX. We don't see enough micro ATX hardware. It tends to simply mean cheap and dull. This proves otherwise. You get plenty of options for cooling and storage. Silverstone has used some clever design. They haven't spent a huge amount of money to come up with those options and they have delivered. The case is fully filtered. Every panel that's perforated, i.e. not this panel, but all the rest, fully filtered. That's a very good thing to see. And it's got a neat design and decent construction. I like it, it's well done. Cons, the negatives. Airflow is marginal, best suited to lower powered hardware. Liquid cooling is limited to 120 mil units. So 122, 43, 60. As you saw, the 360 is tight. A 280 mil won't go in this chassis. And it's, I'm not sure why that is. It seems to me a 280 should go in and would probably work very well, but it is what it is. So a 360 you can just squeeze in and I personally think you should probably steer clear of that and stick with a 240. The price is a bit steep. It's not catastrophic, but it is certainly a little high. Then again, how many of this chassis is Silverstone gonna sell? Probably not very many. So they have to recoup the cost of their tooling somehow. Finally, when the fan speeds are high, the Auto G1M gets noisy. If you keep the fan speeds low, on the other hand, it's nice and quiet. So you need to build your system to ensure the fans don't have to run fast. Overall, the Silverstone G1M, it's an interesting case. It's got some useful and slightly novel features. It's a good piece of work and we're happy to recommend it.